Good afternoon, good morning viewers. So this week has been a very exciting week in the field of quantum computing. There were two back-to-back -back announcements of quantum computational advantage released by the University of Science Technology China group. So the first one was showing quantum computational advantage in a superconducting quantum processor. And another one was showing again, quantum computational advantage in this time, a photonic machine, which is with the Gaussian boson sampling. So this is not the first time that uh, people have seen this kind of computational advantage. And basically what this is showing is that you can have a quantum machine that can perform some kind of calculation or some physical process that is like much faster than what you can do with a classical, say, supercomputer. So for example, in this first one, people show that you can do some calculation that would take 1.2 hours in this machine, but uh, in the most powerful supercomputer, it would take eight years. And for this one, uh, the sampling rate was apparently 10 to the 24 faster. So. So this, this kind of thing is exciting because not necessarily the first time that people have seen it, but this is actually the first time that now these results are coming out of um, a Chinese group, uh, particularly with the superconducting qubits. And so there have been news reports that are saying China's new quantum computer has 1 million times the power of Google's and China launches the world's fastest programmable quantum computer, there's been a lot of interest of this race between the US, rest of the world and China of uh, who's got the most powerful quantum computer. And so this is basically what we're going to try and look at today. Zheng Heng is already cringing with <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, <laughs> cringing at this. But this is basically the question that we're going to try and answer today. Has China managed to beat the rest of the world in developing the most advanced quantum computing technology today. Jun Hang here is going to take you through the results of these two papers. So I'll hand it over to you now. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Two, uh, the title is Two Quantum Supremacy Updates from uh, USDC. And why I say updates? Because they are not something new. They are just like the improvement of their old quantum computing setups. These two areas are actually now the somewhat frontiers of the quantum supremacy. Uh, one is that you use the, this uh, quantum processor to do a sampling. And the other one is that you have this uh, Gaussian boson sampling, uh, which was proposed originally proposed by uh, Scott Arrowson, and where you can disprove the the extended church uh, tooling thesis. You can see from the name, so uh, they all have 2.0. So it's not the first thing, you know, the, the first version of this kind of uh, quantum device. So let's first take a look at this 2.0. Uh, and, you know, it's, so it is, they compare it to the Google's uh, Sycamore processor, uh, which we, or we introduced uh, in the past a little bit. The basic idea is that have these kind of chips and organize in this kind of structure. So every circle here is a, is a qubit and all these bridges across these qubits are the couplers, which, you know, they do like two qubit uh, gates, you know, to couple, couple them. And the idea is that first I start with initial state, then I do a series of, you know, operations on this, um, on these qubits. Some of them are single qubit operations, some, most of them are two qubit operations and after, uh, you know, this kind of, so as you can see that uh, they will repeat the operations and so they will call the circle. So the more the circles are, the, the harder the, it is to be simulated by a, a classical computer. So, and at the end you have this, uh, you, will ob you, you will take a detection and you get the distribution so that so it's negative name so it's um sampling problem so so if you use a classical computer to calculate this uh with a you know with this kind of large number of qubits and also this deep uh circles and it's hard to very hard but well i mean in recent years they do have like come to something new uh simulation method but still it's 
quite a lot. So as you can see, the structures, this one is from the Google one, the old one, and this one is from the True 2.0, which is the new one, but basically the structures are the same. I mean, what is obvious now we can see is the improvements of this uh, number of qubits and the number of couplers they are having right now. For example, the sycamore that they can use 53 qubits and 86 couplers. And now we can do uh, 66 qubits and 110 couplers. But of course, they don't use all of these qubits and the couplers for the, uh, you know, to, 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 to do the, the sampling and somehow they increase the size. So mm -hmm. now they can do uh, 55, uh, sorry, 56 qubits with 20 circles. Well, 20 circle is already, you know, the same as second more, but now they have more qubits, right? Mm -hmm. So. And that's why they need more couplers, maybe, I don't know. So in, with, with, you know, you, if you increase the number of qubits that your magnitude of, you know, required for the class of simulation would be uh, a bit higher, much higher. Well, and this is what you can see from the, you know, the, the one that can show the fidelity and also the performance. For example. I, 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 I just I changed the ratio of this one just to, you know, to somehow align with, you know, zero to minus one, zero to minus two. Mm -hmm. So you can see a little bit of comparison here. So the basic idea is that, for example, here it is 55. So the maximum for sycamore is uh, 53, right? And here the left diagram is uh, <coughs> that when you have a fixed circle and then you change the qubit number and to see, you know, the fidelity and also the time well, I'm mostly here just for fidelity because this kind of uh, you know tie doesn't you know it's done is meaningless now because it was like the the oldest version of the cloud simulation. Now they have much faster way to simulate it now. So and this is for ten circles and you can do more. And the, on the the right diagram is that when you have fixed number of qubits and you do number of circles, you change the numbers. But I mean the the maximum circle is the same, so all twenty. But you have here is 50, 53, right? And here 56. But somehow, if you can, I, from this diagram, it seems to that the Zhu have actually have lower fidelity than the sycamore one. Yes. So the higher, the better fidelity, right? Yeah, I think yeah. The, the fidelity must be you know, decreasing, you know? This is close to one, right? So, mm -hmm. so this one means that actually they have lower fidelity than the sycamore one. Okay, so what is the difference between the left and the, like the A and the B here, actually? The, this one and that yeah, one? Yeah. So A is that when you have fixed of circles, ah, and okay. you change fixed the, mm -hmm. yeah, you change the number of qubits. Oh, I see, so, yes. And here is the, you fix the number of qubits and mm. you uh, increase the circles because it's harder, for, you know, and of course the performance will be worse mm. with a large number of circles. So the part A ones look yes. actually very similar, right? Mm, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. But yet the part B ones. Yeah, part B one that uh, somehow these they ones have, look slightly worse. Yeah, yeah so I, I think they are, they are not doing very good when it comes to large number of circles because you can see the circle here only ten and here is fourteen. Ah. So here, it actually, they have a lower number of circles compared to this. Oh, nice. So that's the main result, I mean, of the Trutron 2.0 and the Sacmore. I mean, In terms does. of the computational advantage, yes. like, so that, can you see that from these graphs um, in terms well, no, of comparing no, to... No, not really. Because the class simulation for both of them are the same. Oh, I see, because the same problem. Yes, yeah, the same problem. I okay, mean, the simulation I method is the same. So you, you only need to... Uh, compare the quantum side because the, cl uh -huh. the cluster side and uh, I think this is already the uh, fastest uh, sorry but the simulation method. Yeah, but, but I mean, when Google released the results, they were saying it's like ten thousand years, yes. right? And you can even see it from this. Yes, exactly. This graph, they, you know, yes. there it says ten thousand. Yes. Yes. And so, what is this eight years then? Is, is, uh, is it that the ten thousand years is now classically? Yeah, ten thousand eight years, or yes. what, what is the eight year estimate? You know. Yes, I think the idea is that when Sycamore was proposed, well, they were the first one to propose it, and then you know there was no, you know, people really studying trying to make a, you know, a improvement on the class simulation. But over this, I mean, just two years, but 
there's a lot of people, you know, interested, and then they throw the time to the, and now they come up with something really faster. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so the classical simulation methods have has also been improved. improved. Yes, improved. exactly. Yes. It's uh, amazing that how you shrink from one thousand years to eight years now, like in two years. It seems like it's <laughs> like yeah. the classical computation that improved more. Right. Over this exactly. Time. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's a funny part. Because it's like, that's why it's saying there's an ongoing race, you know, it's like not only the quantum part is doing, trying their best, the classical part is also yeah. trying to come up with something. Oh, so, I see. So, so because this is like slightly larger number of qubits, so yes. this already, this accounts yeah, for three, the two. Three number of uh, three. Well, it's only three, right? Actually. So somehow mm. I see. So this one is two to three orders of magnitude higher than basically the, the same algorithm that was done on the 53 qubit, the Google one. Right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, this kind of looks like to me that they've more or less matched the Google processor. Is it, yes. Would, uh, yeah, you, I think would so. you sort of agree with that? Like, yeah. Because you don't know like what like Google's capabilities are yes. now, right? So, oh, so no. it's actually, you know, because they don't release these things, right? So, yes. so you know, you're basing it on something maybe, which is two maybe years. Maybe after a few weeks, we'll, after a few months, we'll have a Google one. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, yeah. as well, you know, it's like... Yes, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we move on to the Zhujiang 2.0. So last one, uh, for the Zhujiang one, it's more like they, they just change the size, you know, increase the size. But this one is actually, they have uh, the previous one, the Zhujiang 1.0 had a lot of problems. Okay, so... But for the for the peop, uh, audience that don't know you know much about the uh, Zhujiang 1.0, so uh, maybe here I provide some uh, short explanation. So so I think it was like 2020, so last year, the which is based on Gaussian Poisson sampling, and they are enabled to send 50 indistinguishable single squeezed states into 100 modes, right? And they will come up with 76 output clicks. And this is what it looks their their setup was look like massive. Okay, so maybe I'll just explain a little bit of the Gaussian bone sampling. So Gaussian bone sampling, for example, the last one, the cycle more and uh, the two one is that when you do operations on the qubits and then you you know do detection to measure the probability of the states, right? So for Ga Gaussian sam boson sampling is that you send a boson into an interferometer where well, it's a linear, you know, photonic network. And then you, you let the boson propagate inside the network until they meet the detector in the end. So the original idea of boson sampling is to use the single photons. Uh, but here that for the Gaussian boson sampling, uh, they use a squeezed light, which is a Gaussian state, you know, because this, these kind of sources are much, much faster to produce and uh, than the single single uh, phantoms. So in this case, it's much easier to achieve. So the, the complexity come from that, for example, because they are the Gaussian state, so they can describe called something called covariance matrix. And it's a matrix that and you, you can do according to the detection that, for example, I detect like one phantom here, I detect two phantoms here, and three phantoms at this, uh, you know, output, and you can form a matrix, and then you take the elements of matrix to form a new matrix according to the detection output patterns, and then you calculate the halfian of this uh, of the matrix to obtain your probability. You know, so and this halfian is in the sharp p class. So sharp p class means it's uh, the com computationally very hard. You know, it's even harder than the MP problems. And in the, in the later ex experiment, the people began to use threshold detectors, and the probability become now not a uh, halfian but uh, something called Torontonian. And this Torontonian requires, for example, if I have n a number of fountain outputs, then this Torontonian will require two to the n computation of two to the n determinants, which de which uh, guarantees uh, computational complexity. For the USTC one, the Zhujiang one point zero, so they use this kind of setup and use this kind of detectors. 
And but they have a huge problem that they didn't mention, uh, you know, explicitly. For example, so this is a graph from their their paper, and so so they they use the screening parameter, which is R uh, approximately one point five, and there are fifty input modes. So so in the end, you can see that the loss rate is um, like 67% of loss rate, which means every three fountains enters, only one fountain actually reached the detectors. So this is a big problem because there was a, a simulation method based on, so the, this is the first paper that to propose this kind of simulation method, that it is to use the non-negativity of the phase, uh, you know, quantity probability distribution this one is what actually was aimed for the original idea of Poisson sampling, not Gaussian Poisson sampling. So they improved a little bit and applied to the Gaussian Poisson sampling. So and basically, for higher loss, you can yes. simulate it classically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So for the for the Jujang two point zero, so they want to counter this uh, argument. That's why they specifically now they said that their uh, transmission rate is like. 48% and 54%, which is largely improved. And they also, you know, investigate these standards and enjoy and this uh, figure that where they can see that, for example, that with the screen parameter, that which part, which region are collect simulable and the experiments up above these standards. So, so somehow that, okay, so now this uh, simulation Sorry, this trans loss will not be make their experiment sim classically similar. Oh, but yes. according to this method, yes. their previous science paper was classically simulatable, or, um, or is that clear? Well, Maybe because I think clear. there was some. Uh, yes, I think very much so. But I, well, I didn't really do the calculation here. Mm. But and there are a lot of parameters, for example, the which is required uh, for them the DAC counts rate, it's not really much given. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, I see. So. And even, even the, I mean, even the transmission efficiency is, it's not explicitly given. Right. Like, uh, it's mm -hmm. just like, for example, I just calculate, you know, and it's here that of course they give specifically that, uh, you know, what's the number is and uh, how they will meet the standards. And, mm -hmm. you know, yes. So I think that's be one big reason that they published this paper, you mm -hmm. know, because because it was really a lot of arguments against their experiment about this. And the other part is that uh, Gaussian bone sampling, two main strategies of classical simulation recently emerged. So why is this one? And the other one is the, well, the Google one, actually. <laughs> so the Google is really on, on war with them. So you can see the people, <laughs> you know, this... Uh, Sergio Boxio, yeah. right, who is constantly only working on Sycamore and all this newer turn device for, you know, these yeah. people. And they are now pay attention to Gaussian bone sampling and they are now want to classically simulate the, the Gaussian bone sampling. And mm -hmm. so, it, I mean, it's just recent, um, September 24. Yeah. So just one month ago, they proposed, um, their, their method become ex extremely effective again for those lower number of um, uh, correlations but, but they still they have their methods has limit and the limit that they cannot do very well in the higher order of correlations and I, I would just actually well, today I was reading the Scott Arverson's uh, mm -hmm. you know he has a, a long article about which one could be used because uh, which one is you know the higher correlation or the lower correlation which one should be you know used as a to, to examine the performance of Gaussian bone sampling, you know, experiments. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's no actually uh, determined arguments. And so I think it is still will be more, we will see more papers, maybe more classical simulation, more mm -hmm. and then improvements. That's basically the contents of these two papers. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Uh, so for this one, like, yeah, so they, they were saying it was like two to the 24 sampling rate faster. Um, so what do they base that on actually? They said proof, maybe must be proof force. I think just it's, a proof force. yes, um, maybe just directly counting the Torontonians. 
Oh, I see. I, okay. I, I think I think okay. that's the what they're comparing to. So what what is the best way to understand? Yes. Uh, say this particular paper is it kind of an improvement over the original <coughs> uh, Gaussian boson sampling yes. experiment yes. that basically they cut down losses. Yes, exactly. And they also increase the number of. Well, I guess I think so. Nodes. Maybe in the abstract yeah. of the other paper. Yeah. So, for example, here now they have um, yes, one hundred thirteen photon detection events. So mm -hmm. this is actually very important because uh, you can see that uh, the complexity of class root at least brute force simulation is two to the you know this number. I see. So that's so two huge. to the one hundred thirteen, yeah. and originally they have like two to the seventy six. So, so a big improvement. Yeah, big improvement. Yeah. Yes, in that direction. In sense. Yeah. And I mean, this setup. Just I'm just looking at this photo here. Right? Yeah, this looks crazy. Look at this. <laughs> look at this setup. I I thought yeah. it was like a building or something when I first <laughs> looked at it. <laughs> yeah. You know. So this you know this oh no God. longer even starts to look like an optical table. This no. is just like three D. Yes. It's kind of insane. Yeah. It looks like a synthesizer. Yeah. <laughs> Does actually. <laughs> We've seen all these things about Gaussian boson sampling. Fine. What application are they suitable for? Application? Yeah. To, sh to show you the quantum supremacy. Just, just to show me quantum supremacy, and nothing more. Well, the, I, the, uh, the, the, the one they are doing on on a, on a chip, yeah. that is the superconducting one, doesn't mm -hmm. it have any application? I mean, the superconducting quantum processor yes. is an actual processor yeah. that mm -hmm. you can actually run quantum algorithms mm, on, right? No. The Gaussian boson sampling one is not actually a quantum computer, right? No. I mean, it says phase programmable, mm. but I guess that just means that you, the you can tune the phase. Oh, you mean the okay, okay. You can't program okay. it to do a calculation, mm. right? No. Right. Like, not a quantum algorithm. Yes. Maybe you can do, you know, discrete the uh, free agents. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, I think there's some kind of, you know, proposed application. Yes. But in general, it's not like it's a programmable quantum computer. Right? No. But the, this one actually is, it should be a quantum processor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is more like a real quantum computer in the sense of mm -hmm. what you imagine a quantum computer should be. I don't think... You can call a computer anything that is not programmable. That's a feature of computing. <laughs> okay, it's true. But okay. I don't think they call it a computer. They don't call it a compu quantum computer, well, actually. And it's good they don't call it because it's not a computer. Yeah. Um, but it's within the range of quantum advantage. Okay, so do we have a, a verdict on uh, who has the most powerful quantum computer in the world? Oh, <laughs> didn't, wait, didn't you say we don't know until Google releases their update from two years ago? Yeah, but the, I mean that that's that's always the case, right? Like, okay. Because you know they release the they release the new quantum computer, you know, uh, at a particular day, and it happens only every few years, right? I see. So, is but the current race between just those two. Well, no, there are some other groups, of course, that, okay. are, that are making. But, uh, but Sycamore is the comparison here. Yes. The Sycamore is sort of the the top one that everybody is, I guess, trying to beat, if you like. Probably this is the one that's, yeah, the closest to the Sycamore that it, that it looks like. Um, on first glance, it, it looks like it's sort of matching the performance. And in some ways, maybe it's slightly... Well, I think it's the, like... The errors are... Um, higher in some some cases but i think it's like like this turn based games you know you attack first and then attack you mm -hmm. you know it's not like you simultaneously you know you, you fight with each other right. so yes. we have to the turn is not over so we don't know yet <laughs> right yes yeah okay, okay. so maybe your like turn a, google i i i think yeah exactly maybe in the one year <laughs> nobody publish anything new okay that's you know, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The okay. question was, um, does China have the most powerful quantum computer in the world? Uh, I don't I'm think sure. so. We can say it. Well, <coughs> well, if you look at the performance of those two graphs, I, I would say that... They're talk, similar, actually? Or? Yeah, that even. Okay. Yeah, so... Tight race. Yeah, 
I mean, in our opinion, the superconducting one is similar caliber to the Google one. Yeah. But Gaussian boson sampling, I don't think any other experiment in the world can can do that. The same three. experiment right now. Like probably there's no other group or country in the world that has the resources to put that together. So, so yeah, in that sense, that's yeah, so the most the, advanced experiment yeah, we'll of that type. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching and we will see you for the next video. Bye. Bye.